because he is the absolute truth. And the primary cause of all causes. And the primary cause of all causes. Of creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. The creation, sustenance, destruction of the manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there's no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge into the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, Only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitravotra. Paramo Nimatsaranam Satam. Vedyam Vastavam Atravastu. Shivadam Tapa Chayon Mulanam. Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite. Kimva Purir Ishwaraha. Sadyo Hriti Aburudhya Tetra. Hriti Bihi Susu Subhistakshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one uh, attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpataro galitam falam. Sukamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Pivata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Mohur aho raska buhi O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. Mature fruit of the desire to read Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of C. Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although his nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Shinvatam Swakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hirdiantak Stovadrani Vidu Nati Srihit Satam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. 
want to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna who is dwelling in, within everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who, can, who constantly hears about him. Who constantly engages in hearing about him. In this de way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. Dormant transcendental. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam, and from devotees. He becomes fixed in devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo kamalo Tadarajas tamo bhavo. Oh, no, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I read the English translation, Nasta Prayasu. Anyway, Nasta Prayasu Badresu. Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naistiki In this way, a devotee <coughs> in this way, yeah. A devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo babo kamalo badayas chai chaitre taran avidam sitvam satve prasidati By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yogataha bhagavat tattva vijnanam mukta sangasya jayate. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hirdeya grantis chidyante sarvasam saya shiyante chasyakarmani drista evatmanishwari thus Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of, su of samsayam samagam. Understanding the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 14, Verse 43. Apisvit parya bun bunkt tas tvam sambojyan vrida balakan jugupsitam karma kinchit kritavanna yad Kritavam na yad akshamam. Translation. Have you not taken care of old men and boys who deserve to dine with you? Have you left them and taken your meals alone? Have you committed some unpardonable mistake which is considered to be abominable? Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. It is a duty of a householder to feed first 
all the children, the old members of the family, the brahmanas and the invalids. Besides that, an ideal household is required to call for any unknown hungry man to come and dine before himself goes before he himself goes to take his meals. He is required to call for such a hungry man thrice on the road. The neglect of this prescribed duty of a householder, especially in the matter of the old men and children, is unpardonable. Wow. So here we see that the, this whole list of things that you just is asking Arjuna are things that cause inauspiciousness in life. So we see there's are many great, let's say, uh, requirements that a person must satisfy to be civilized and to be free of karmic reactions. So it's a pretty complicated thing. But if one follows the rules and regulations of Krishna consciousness, they avoid all these things naturally. You don't have to remember them all. You, you're, the rules and regulations of Krishna consciousness permit you to naturally uh, not ignore any of these points that are being made. <clears throat> Text 44. Kachit Prestatamenata Hirdayanatma Bandunu Udayanatma Bandunu Sunyos me Rahito Nityam Manyasete Yata Naruk Translation, or is it that you are feeling empty for all time because you might have lost your most intimate friend, Lord Krishna? So now he's coming to the main point. Oh, my brother Arjuna, I can think of no other reason for your becoming so dejected. So all the other things were rhetorical. Yudhisthira knew that Arjuna would not violate any of those things. So he eliminated everything else and he comes to the main point. That is that Arjuna is dejected and, and fearful, or let's say he's in a, looks mournful because Krishna has disappeared. Purport. All the inquisitiveness of Maharaj Yudhisthira about the world situation was already conjectured by Maharaj Yudhisthira on the basis of Lord Krishna's disappearance from the vision of the world. And this was now disclosed by him because of the acute de dejection of Arjuna, which could not have been possible otherwise. So even though he was doubtful about it, he was obliged to inquire frankly from Arjuna on the basis of Sri Narada's indication. Thus then, the Bhaktivedanta purports of the first canto 14th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam entitled The Disappearance of Lord Krishna. So this obliged to inquire frankly from Arjuna uh, on the indication of Narada Muni. So this is like uh, what you would call a treaties of in, or, or instructions given to all living entities on what should be the mistakes that they can make in their behavior and obviously to avoid those mistakes. He's calling them out. Uh, but he, he, he knew he had a premonition due to things that Narada Muni had told him that Krishna was going to disappear. And uh, and now he comes to the main point, and he asks Arjuna, is the reason you are so forlorn and so, uh, let's say, dejected due to the disappearance 
of your most intimate friend, Lord Krishna. Okay, are there any questions? Uh, that's why I said he's instructing us today. He's instructing all people on, on all things that are inauspicious in the behavior of a genuine devotee that would be considered inauspicious. Not, not, not in, a genuine, uh, in a genuine devotee, but in, in all people. These, these things are inauspicious things. And, and if you don't act according to uh, proper ways, you commit, uh, out of ignorance or, or negligence, you'll commit offenses, and, and then that'll make you unhappy. Lord Krishna's disappearance from the vision of the world. Conjectured me guest. Oh yeah, okay. This is a question that I always have on time. We speak about, we normally we speak about the appearance of the world. Yeah. We never, we never celebrate the appearance. So you're asking why they're discussing this? No, no, no. It's a question. It's a why? Why? Because the Lord never really disappears. But in case of this, other personalities like Lord Krishna, they celebrate their disappearance. Well, they they the, see, that's because they have a, they it's assumed that they have a material body, whereas the Lord's body is completely spiritual. It's, it was never born in a material body, so it cannot disappear. Disappearance of a Vaishnava, yeah. Yeah, it could be because of that. Because uh, of okay, you, you could. See, in, in Krishna's case, he doesn't really, like, disappear because, you know, the body dies. That's an illusory. He does, in order to convince the atheist, he leaves behind what appears to be a material body. But that's an, that. But that's not his body. His, his body is not subject to birth and death, old age and disease. So he didn't get old. Yeah. See, so he's not going to dis. He's not going to disappear because uh, he got old, sick, and died. He's, he's eternal. Uh, and he's, he does, he's never has a material body, always has a spiritual body. So devotees don't talk about the disappearance because the disappearance uh, is like something for the atheists who, who don't understand Krishna. But for devotees, they know that Krishna, Krishna never disappears. The sun never disappears. The only reason it looks like it disappears is because we're in a limited position. The sun's always shining. So Krishna doesn't really disappear. Just like he didn't disappear for the devotees. I mean for the gopis. They were they always were thinking of him and remembering him. And he didn't disappear because he was he was in Mathura or Dwarka. 
So devotees don't talk about the disappearance of the Lord because uh, they know that, that the whole idea of him being shot in the foot by a hunter is, is all an illusion, illusory story. It's not a real story. And that he leaves a body behind. That's not, that's not his body. It's like a magician, right? Uh, a magician is talking, and then all of a sudden, these two ladies come out, and they help him get into a box. And then they saw the box in half, and then open it up like this. You see, there's two parts. The legs on one side, and the torso on the other side. And then they close the curtain, and then quickly they open the per curtain, and there's the man jumping up and down, Haribo. Now, that's an illusion. All right. Did they actually cut him in half? No. But it looked like they cut him in half. Did the Lord actually disappear? No. He hasn't disappeared. But it's, it's an illusory representation and therefore, the devotees, don't, the devotees don't talk about things that are not real. Uh, yeah, I understand that folks shouldn't be hanging in the disappearance of the Lord. He goes further than that. Yes. So, yeah, but I don't quite understand that. Yeah, and... The devotees want, don't want to hear the Lord disappeared. He's not here anymore. Is it? The gopis didn't, I mean, they were lamenting, but out of extreme love for the Lord, and because of their extreme love, they never forgot the Lord. So he, he never really left Vrindavan for the gopis. See, when someone dies, people say, Oh, we'll never forget you. We'll always keep you in our thoughts. But do they? You know. Uh, but the gopis did. And Krishna doesn't disappear. He's, he's, he's eternal. So he can appear at any time. Just like uh, Lord Chaitanya appeared at the... Uh, uh, the beckoning of Lord Nityananda at the uh, uh, the uh, Chip Rice uh, Festival. But he was far away. But he appears, and Nityananda, Nityananda walks around with him. And the devotees, I don't think they actually saw Lord Chaitanya, but they saw Nityananda talking to someone. I'm not sure if they actually saw him or not, but Nityananda did. You see? So... Yeah, so, uh, I mean, Lord, Lord Chaitanya was present. Not everybody had the eyes to see it. Lord Nityananda did. So the Lord doesn't really disappear. He's in the heart, right? You can see the Lord in the heart. Yes. So devotee's not going to dwell on the, he disappeared. They're gonna, they know it's an illusory story. They only deal with things that are eternal. They don't, they don't, they don't dwell on things that are temporary. Is it just to, uh, to bewilder the atheist, right? Exactly right. Exactly right. Okay, well, we'll stop right there. This was an important point. The Lord never disappears. He only appears like that, like the sun. The sun never really disappears. See, that's why in Shastra, you know, everything has to be discussed properly. Because yes. Apparently, somebody who is reading this book would, would believe that this is real, you see. Everybody well, it, it looks like that. It may s sound like that, but it's, it's not a fact. Exactly. He's like an ordinary man like us. You know, he disappeared. Yeah. He's dead. He left a body behind. He was shot in the foot and died. But then if you become really in you know, contact with the knower, you see. 
Well, it's like the, it's like the magician, right? He, they put him in a box. They sort him in half. And then they close the curtain. They open it, and he's there, jumping up and down, chanting Hari Bo. So, what they you, they can't they can't say they didn't see him be cut in half. They saw it with their eyes, but it was an illusion. They cr that's what a magician does. The, the real name of a magician is an illusionist. He creates illusions. And sometimes the illusion is so real, you, you know, you believe it. But when then it's not, it's, it's not, the, it's not the case or uh, the same when you see it again? Well, uh, their, their body is not burned. Because the body is considered spiritual. It was used only in Krishna's service. Yeah. But they preserve it in salt. Right. So, I mean, it, there's a lot of questions that, uh, you know, I mean, without asking questions, a person will come to a conclusion without knowing if it's right or wrong. Right. They'll think it's right because it seems right. He died. He left a body behind. He was shot in the foot. Right. But uh, that doesn't mean it's it's the true understanding of what happened. That's why we always have to wait to hear from the Acharyas. But this whole list that Maharaj Yudhisthira gives of things that lead to inauspicious results, bad, bad, omens. bad omens and so forth, is very instructive. Mm. And also, and and by, by explaining the negative thing, you also understand what is the positive thing. And it has to be repeated delusions. You can produce some different... Yeah, of course. Definitely. You can tell what's happening by uh, what's going on in your body as well as what's going on in nature. Is it, is it, is it like when you're walking? Yeah. And then by accident, you, you put your foot against something, not your right or left foot, but in the middle. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and then once I, I've experienced that, you're traveling, walking, but they are those days in the village, you know, just, just walking, walking, walking. And then we go to the next village, and then some word during the journey, you know, the person will make an idol with his foot. An idol, you know, it used to be a left foot foot. Oh, somebody knows what we're doing. And it doesn't, somebody tells us that. So it's a big, big, uh, uh, what's called, uh, yeah, it's somebody in the village. Oh, and, they, okay. and he put, he put his, because of that, he said that this is a bad news. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> you see, it's there everywhere in, all in the cultures. And it's kind of very close, you know, so many things in Africa are kind of very close. Yeah. So much, especially yeah. fire. Fire? Especially, yeah, the, the way they use fire. They pray to the fire, they consider fire as uh -oh. sacred. Yeah. Well, no, we read about, uh, oh, no, no, I read about it. See, uh, the Brahma Jyoti comes into the material world by being reflected off of the sun. Yeah. And also, uh, fire and electricity come from the Brahma Jyoti also. I see. So it is a sacred thing. Well, how about how about the Zoroastrians? 
uh, the Zoroastrians in the in the Iran or Persia and, and India. Right. They're fire worshippers also. Yeah. And then also the symbol of uh, ancient uh, Persia was uh, the sun, right? Uh, a lion with uh, a head that looks something like the sun. It's a, it's a very powerful symbol. It's a symbol, symbol of uh, tremendous uh, strength. Yeah, I see. So the sun, the fire, electricity, lightning, all these things are coming from Brahma Jyoti. Yeah. I, I wonder, I, th I don't think I read it in here. It was in no, what I, I'm... I read it. Yes, <laughs> yeah, because it's in, in fact, he said, Papa Jyoti just said that the, the sun is also the king of the, the, all the planets, and also the sun is wise in many ways. Sun is what? The light. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the energy that makes, energy. Make, make, yeah. And then in another the planet said that that's the sun. Mm -hmm. So sun, yes. Many things that I don't think, I don't know what to do about that. Now, another thing Prabhupada says is the sun is the unique source of all light in the universe. Now, astronomers don't accept that, right? But the astronomers, they say that all the stars are suns. And then Prabhupada counters that. He says, in nighttime, all the stars are there twinkling. How come, it, how come it, they can't eliminate the night? Whereas the one sun eliminates all darkness, you see. So uh, that proves that the, the, uh, the moon and the, uh, and, the plant and the stars are simply reflecting the light of the sun. If they were suns, they should be able to, there wouldn't be any darkness. And there's millions of stars, and it's a gigantic moon, right? But they're not able to dissipate the, the darkness. The moon does to a certain extent, but not really completely. So, therefore, they're not, they're just reflecting light. They're not actually sources of light. Yeah. So the direct uh, diffusion, or diffusion, or direct uh, reflection of Brahma Jyoti must be with the sun. The sun is yes. the sun. Yeah. And then the rest is. It the enters into the universe like yeah. that. If the others were sun, there wouldn't be darkness yeah. throughout space. They'd be all, always lit up. Haribo. All glories to Prabhupada.